All right, we are back. Shaw Money XL. Shaw, what's happening? You still with us? Yes, I'm here, man. I'm, oh. happy, I'm happy to be here. Beautiful, man. We appreciate that. Now, 50, obviously, did the strong affiliation with 50 ever make it uncomfortable for you? As he's always got beef with different artists. He's beefing with Rick Ross now. He's beef with Fat. I mean, I don't know who he hasn't beef with, but but you seem to really get down with everybody. How did that affect you in the industry? I mean, it, it affected me a lot because, you know, I don't share frenemies, so there's not going to be an enemy of fit that's going to be a friend of me. Mm. That's real. Him. So anybody that he got a problem with, I automatically have that problem. I inherit it. I'm guilty of my association. I don't try to act like I'm not. I don't try to say, well, that's 50s beef. Nah. It's my beef regardless. I got a big G and a tattoo on my arm, bigger than my forehead. It's not, it's, I'm genuine no matter what I fucking think or what they think or whatever. So no matter what, I, I got to wear that problem as if it was 50. So I've been in situations where it's been uncomfortable because I travel by myself. I don't move with entourages or security. I travel with my wife and my kids and you go in places like Nick Games and you see these idiots. And, and then you get the eyeballs and you get the school talk. And I'm like, I'm here. I'm not a talker. You want to do something, do it. Watch how I, I'm good for two or three heads. I can take them out myself, mm. physically. I mean, I'm not a small guy. So I'm cool with that. But at the same time, in business, you know, as I want to progress, I want to be here, you know, like L.A. Reid, you know, 52-year-old guy running Def Jam. I want to be here forever. So in, in certain parts, it, it does, you know, hit the relationships. But at the same time, I mean, how many guys can say that they that could have produced next to Dr. Dre and Eminem on 10 million records sold twice? Amazing, amazing. So it's, 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 you got you got to take you got to take the reward <laughs> with the risk, you know. Now, Sha, when when did you realize that you were ready to leave G Unit? And obviously, by the way you're talking, it was an amicable split. I mean, you know, it's not like you're saying anything negative at all. No, it, it wasn't a decision. It was more of a, a phase that we were all going through. It's called growing pains. Mm. You know, they had a TV show about it. You get to a certain point in your career, and all my, the artists were feeling a certain way. We all were feeling a certain way towards each other. So it was growing pains. We went through a phase. 50, he can sit there and tell you he was wrong for some of the decisions just as much as I can sit there and tell you I was wrong. Because what, what Gina was was what is going on now. All these 360 deals going on within these record labels. I was doing that, you know, when we first started G Unit. I brought Buck to the table, and, um, you know, because I, I took care of all his business, handled all this stuff, booking shows, put the money in his pocket, took him from Nashville to fucking Cashville. Mm. So I chose to be the manager. At the same time, I'm running the company. So at certain points, it became conflicting when these guys thought they wanted to be greater or 50 or this or wanted to have some kind of combative situation with him and that's when it became an uncomfortable position for me mm. you know what I'm saying so that's when it, it was just a phase and then, you know as we see you know me and Fifth are still here so regardless of what my decision was made it wasn't a, a point where we're totally apart from each other in business so we're still in business it's just that at the time I was managing Buck and you know there was a lot going on and Fifty just wanted one person on his team and not someone that was handling that and that so it just was a growing phase you know what I mean and, and I learned from it Fifty did Buck did I'm telling you Buck did we all did Banks did Yale yeah, did and it, I mean it's a growing phase man and that's interesting that you bring up Young Buck we've always felt over here at Scope that Young Buck is just incredibly talented uh What's what's the, what's going on with him, Sha? What's is is he gonna? I mean, you know, people have said he he's lyrically as good as a Tupac. I mean, he, and he's got the look and the image. What is he gonna be able to bounce back? I mean, honestly, that's up for him to decide because the fate is in in one man's hand and it's your own. Mm. In your relationship with yourself and God is what chooses your direction. Um, so I would say for Buck, of course, I wish him the best. I just think that he didn't make the right decisions. Um, and it was an awkward position for me to be in at the same time. And I didn't want to do a service for him. So that's why I chose not to manage him any further because whoever was to manage him was supposed to be on the opposite end of 50. Wow. 
Wow. And my relationship was always to make situations work. I was a problem for solve a problem fixer and make us work as a unit. That's what your unit is about. So when it became a time when there was no more unity within it and someone had to be in a combative position, it, it, it didn't serve Buck. I wouldn't serve Buck as a, the best person for it. So, I mean, Buck is talented, but his decision making and uh, his timing and, um, I mean, just, he, he can't envy people. You know, a lot of people look at 50 and envy him. They see the vitamin water deal. They count his money from, from him to everybody. And I think that that's, a, that's a, a characteristic that these people need to take out of them because that's what's hindering them from becoming who they need to be themselves. Shaw, would you say that that's why the Tony Yayo works so perfectly with 50? Because Yayo and, and Banks know, hey, look, 50's the superstar. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a matter of this. I, I'll pull out a list. Like, you're going for a job interview. Yeah. I'm, I'm, this is a rapid interview, all right? I'm going to say to you, I'm going to have a check mark towards everything. Do you do drugs? Do you smoke weed? Do you do syrup? Do you drink alcohol? Do you, do you fucking do you work out? Do you, do you handle your business? Do you show up to meetings on time? Do you, do you conduct great conversations? Do you carry on conversations? Do you keep relationships? Do you burn bridges? These are going to be all checked on your thing. And determined by what you check off, at the end it's going to tell you how far you're going to make it as a businessman, not a rapper. Because you're a rapper, but this is business. Mm. So Tony Yayo knows. He, he, Yayo Banks knows he's lazy. So he knows half of the shit that 50 do, wake up at 6 in the morning, work out twice a day, three times a day, healthy all day, all day long, don't do any drugs, that he's not going to do that. So when you know that you're not measuring up to that, then you're going to lose some of the stuff that you're looking for in what makes you a successful artist. So Yale was cool with that. Yale's cool with being the any drinker, pop shit talking behind 50. That's the boss. And he, he's so good in his skin and in his position. But other people want to overlook all of those checks and say, nah, I'm still supposed to be that. But don't even do half the shit my man do. And then you're going to sit there and expect the rewards. Mm. This is a focused guy. Like, seriously, like, I have to talk to you for hours about this. We could do seminars on this. <laughs> this is about really being a focused individual. Is and that with the game too, Sha? Is that kind of what happened with the game also, or? This, this is what happened with the game. The game got spoon-fed so much that he didn't realize the spoon was still in his mouth. Mm. He went to Europe and didn't realize it was in his mouth because nobody that put the spoon in his mouth was around him. So he came back from Europe, and all of a sudden, he became what was called Hurricane Game. He's popping shit, talking recklessly. But, yo, I can sit here and tell you I seen him the day when he was sitting in Dr. Dre's studio, looking like a fat puppy, getting ready. V Mac then pulled me to the side and said, "Yo, this is my little homie from Compton. You know what I mean? Bumpkin, if you a blood, and and he look, he needs some attention." I talked to Mike Lynn and listened to the music. Banks co-signed it, did a song with him. Fifty started pulling it out. Right, you know what? Y'all feeling this? Yeah, we should do some West Coast shit, bring the West back fully. You know, they only had Snoop at the time. Mm. No lie. You know what I'm saying? So we did that off the strip of one, the West to shine. We wasn't no East Coast only niggas. We was here, hip hop is global. So we went and took in a dude off of that whole strip and knowing the movement was strong, that the cosign would solidify all of that that he was. He got all of that. That's what equity you can't see. It's what equity is. It's, it's, it's things that you work hard for that people can't see. We wow. did all of that for game. Dre did the de best at delivering the best music, but the footwork was done by us. Me, 50 Cent, G. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and he came back as, he came back and went away out of, out of the country, so he didn't have no communication with no one. So it built up enough in him to feel like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm about to drop this shit is number one I'm feeling good hated or love it was 50 songs for his album he gave him the song and Sha let's hold it one quick sec this is an incredible interview hold on one sec we're gonna take a quick break Scope TV Sha Money XL <laughs> 